Welcome back, everybody. We here at Full Throttle are diligent in our review of comments, emails, DMs, and even messages received via Courier Pigeon. One such message from a Karen Torsney of Los Angeles, California, accosted Full Throttle for only reviewing and providing information about military and expensive airplanes. Karen feels that we need to spend more time doing reasonable reviews of sensible airplanes here on Full Throttle. In an effort to appease Karen, we decided to have a look at a reasonable plane. It's called the Virus. The Pipistrelle SW121 is a very reasonable and sensible two-seat plane built in Slovenia and Italy beginning in 1999. And to really appreciate its reasonableness, we're going to fly one around Slovenia. Now I just need to figure out where that actually is. Okay, it's a good news, bad news sort of situation. I've found Slovenia, but it's dangerously near Italy, the smelly older cousin of South Central Europe. There is a silver lining here though. We're near Northern Italy and I'm told that, much like America, it's the Southerners you need to be the most worried about. Either way, we're not gonna risk it, so we're gonna strive to avoid Italian airspace. And on the other side, crap, it's hungry. I feel like they had a murderous noblewoman who may have been one of the most prolific female serial killers of all time. Well, at least Hungary's busy minding its own business these days. Obviously, given our situation, we will strive to stay solely within Slovenian airspace. Now I know what you're thinking. This looks like one of those styrofoam planes children get to throw around the yard. Perhaps one of those balsa wood airplanes that have a rubber band running along the length of the fuselage that provides power to a tiny plastic propeller. But no, this actually has a gas-powered engine offering a full 80 horsepower. There's even an electric version available, Karen. As you may have guessed, the Virus is an ultralight aircraft and it's also sold as a light sport aircraft. Now the lightest thing I've flown in the last 10 years was an A-10 that was missing a wing, but I'm told these are quite popular these days. I can understand why. While it feels a bit like you've been devoured by and are now controlling an unruly dragonfly, the views are incredible. While it shares the same troublesome blind spot that all high-wing aircraft have, the one where you can't check final approach while you're sitting at the end of a runway and ready to take off, the doors are almost entirely see-through, which is great as long as you just don't lean on them too hard. Plus, while the cabin is a little bit cramped, it has a very reasonable 480-pound cargo and passenger capacity with full fuel. That means you can get almost two whole Americans in there, which is pretty darn impressive with only 80 horsepower. There's even an option for a safety parachute for the entire plane, which is a very sensible addition, as I'm sure Karen would agree. Plus, the virus has wings like a glider and it weighs only 770 pounds empty. It has a tricycle gear and a tail dragger configuration available. Either way, this is going to set you back at least $113,000. That's an awful lot of Starbucks Karen will be missing out on. And because this is an ultralight, the Civil Aviation Agency of Slovenia regulates it, as opposed to the regulation standard across the European Union. Consequently, a person can get a little training from a flight school and earn a license to fly one of these at 17 years old and without any medical certificate other than a standard driver's license. That trend of not requiring a specific medical exam is one of the great perks of these ultralight aircraft around the world. But Karen is interested in practicality and reasonableness, not how, in her opinion, society continues to lower the bar for the, quote, kids these days. So let's do some sightseeing. With an ultralight like this, your goal isn't really to transport people or things. It's certainly not to bomb the heck out of the enemy, even though the Indian military does use a version of the virus for training. With a cruising speed of 110 knots or about 115 miles per hour, it's not even going to go places fast. However, if you want a little extra cash on the side by helping herd sheep from the air around Velika Planina, this would be perfect for it. If you just want to heckle tourists trying to enjoy the lake near Ljubljana, you can do that too. 
If you want to see Slovenia's forests or mountains without risk of attack from brown bears or roaming Italians, this will also work very well. Plus, you can fly almost anywhere in Slovenia, land, and compliment their efforts at bee preservation, which I'm sure you're in tune with being from California. On the aviation side of things, with this being an ultralight, it doesn't have mixture. It also has flapperons, whatever the heck those are, instead of your standard ailerons and separate flaps. On the bright side, it can take off with around 500 feet of ground roll. But don't worry about all that business stuff, Karen. The virus will still keep you entertained. The pilot's operating handbook in this simultaneously warns about not doing aerobatic maneuvers, but then also lets you know that the plane can handle a load factor of up to plus four Gs and minus two Gs. That's more than a Cessna 172, and with how light this plane is, that'll be more than enough to scare the living bejesus out of anyone looking for a wild time in a reasonably priced plane. However, it does have some drawbacks. The fuel system is gravity fed, so it won't run for long when you're inverted. Plus, if you just wanna hug trees like many Californians, you'll have to get out of the plane to do that. You can't hug them from inside the plane, keep that in mind. But then again, with you being from LA, you may be more worried about defensive armament. There's no room for a rear turret on this, and your door gunner will have to be particularly minuscule if you wanna get both of you in there. I know it's disappointing, but I'm sure you'll figure something out. Maybe maybe glitter dispensers on the wingtips. Just get creative. It's not meant to keep you alive in LA traffic. It's really just meant to be fun to fly. And that, that they got right. I test flew this expecting to hate it. It lacks a heads up display. It doesn't have an ejection seat. Heck, it has less than a hundred horsepower. Each of those alone could be a deal breaker in my mind. But this snappy little plane from far too close to Italy reminds me of why I fell in love with flying in the first place. It really does look a little bit like a toy, but with that wing area, I'd wager this would almost work as a sailplane if the conditions were right. Plus, you can actually remove one of the doors and still operate the plane in accordance with its POH. So that'd be a good time. Now, in her scathing letter, Karen also mentioned that she doesn't understand the purpose of the useful load divided by the engine start time metric we use here on full throttle. That's fine, I totally understand. We need a much more reasonable test for this very sensible airplane. So we'll calculate how many average corgis can fit into the passenger compartment by volume. To do this, we turn to Slovenia's best test pilot. Some say he once built an entire castle in the entrance to a cave and that everywhere he urinates is formally recognized by the government as a nature preserve. All we know is he's not the Rug, but he's the Rug's Slovenian cousin. That's right, they start learning physics in sixth grade in Slovenia, so some light geometry should be no problem for Gospod Rug. Okay, using a standard corgi lying down, we're gonna try and calculate its volume as though it was a cylinder. Volume equals pi r squared times the height. Now, your standard standing corgi is gonna be around 12 inches tall to the top of its shoulders and around 26 inches long. So we're envisioning that each corgi is laying down an essentially a 10 inch diameter, 26 inch long cylinder. So the radius of that prone corgi is gonna be around five inches. So pi times five squared times 26 follow the order of operations and we come out with an average volume of a lying down corgi of approximately 2,042 inches cubed, or around 1.12 square feet. Now the cockpit of the virus is a bit cramped and finding the exact dimensions has proven a bit difficult even for Gospod Rug. However, he managed to interpolate some proximate dimensions using a combination of guesswork and witchcraft. So we'll treat this as essentially a rectangular prism. That will give us a little leeway since the windscreen creeps in a bit, but we're also not calculating for the exact area around the rudder pedals. So the two should approximately cancel out. Okay, that area comes out to 94,431 inches cubed or around 55 cubic feet. So with that, we know that we can fit at least 46 corgis in there. Plus, given the floof factor as a standard variable for corgis, we know that the difference or lost space around each cylindrical corgi being fit into this rectangular prism of a cockpit would be negligible. They'd basically snuggle the heck out of each other and not retain an exact cylindrical shape. Voila, there you have it, Karen. A reasonable measurement with which we can compare sensible airplanes. The volumetric corgi load. 
For anyone curious, Gaspard Rug was able to get it started in 20 seconds, and with its 560 pound useful load, the virus scores a 28 on our standard full throttle scoreboard. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and be sure to check out our entire full throttle series linked in the description. Thanks for watching.